It's that time of week again. Tricky, tricky Thursday. <laughs> Welcome back. My name is Trisha. I'm the owner of Creative Costume Academy, where I want to share all of my pattern knowledge with you and let you know that there is an easier way to learn. So that's what we're all about here. Today, I want to really break it down to the bare bones minimum of learning pattern making. It really goes back to the way that I teach. And if you're interested in learning more about pattern making, I have two different ways that you can learn with me. You can check that out in the bio. One of them is I am the lead instructor for Pattern Making Academy, partnered up with the amazing Mimi G. So you can check that out and start learning right away. I also have a private pattern making community where I have live events, we get together, we hold each other accountable and challenge ourselves to make interesting and creative pattern making projects. That one is not always open, but you can sign up for the wait list if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. But I wanna tell you today about the three pattern making principles. Any way that you learn from me, every class that I have taught about pattern making, I always start with this foundation because it's really, really important. But a lot of times people don't know what I'm talking about when I start talking about it. So I, wa I thought I would go over it today with you so you have a little bit of an insight before you start learning. A lot of pattern making classes start with you drafting a sloper. And what a sloper is, I've got many Tricky Thursdays about what that is and how it's handy and how it's helpful. So we won't get too into that, but basically it's a basic template pattern for you to start making new designs. Um, I don't teach that way because while I think drafting a sloper is super handy and it is something you should learn at some point in your pattern learning journey, it's not the easiest place to start. To start with plotting points and taking measurements, it's a lot of math. And then in the end, if you're not familiar with how to do pattern making, you have a basic sloper and you don't know what to do with it. So we kind of skip ahead that of that step. And I do have a draft your sloper class. If you are interested, you can check that out as well. But if you're ready to dive in and have fun with your patterns and learn really how pattern making works so you can start making those like crazy cool designs that you love, then let me tell you a little bit about my strategy and my method. Now, these aren't my principles. These aren't my foundational rules. This is what I learned when I was in school, but I start here because it's really exciting to see what is possible. And you don't have to draft a sloper you can purchase a sloper. In fact, I have slopers that you can purchase in many different size range. Um, you can DM me about that. I am about to update all of those. And there's other companies that sell them as well. You can also take a very basic pattern and use that as your template. So skipping ahead past that, then we get into the three foundational principles. Now, what is that and what does that mean? There are rules in pattern making, and I'm not saying like the rules that you don't want to follow because they're boring and mundane, <laughs> um, but those are important too. But there are rules and kind of, they, they kind of allow you to learn how patterns work. And not only will these rules allow you to understand how patterns work and to make all these new designs, but it helps you to understand how it works to be changing things around and what you're really allowed to do um, so that when you're doing fittings and you're seeing things that aren't quite right, you know how to add something extra in there, take something away, fit it out, um, and that sort of thing. So the re to my, in my opinion, learning the foundational rules is not only a more fun way to learn pattern making so that you can start to see what's actually possible. And you, the other cool thing is you can start applying these rules because they're rules of that work for any pattern, any size, you can start using these rules on patterns that you buy at the store. So that's what I think is really cool about it because you can just start doing stuff right away. So that's 
how I teach. And I'm here to tell you about what those three foundational principles are. So the first one is moving a dart. Now, I've heard that others don't agree that moving a dart is really fun or exciting. To me, moving a dart is everything. Once you understand how and why you can move a dart and how it works, it's the key to everything else. It's the key to the other two principles. It's the key to understanding how to do fittings. Um, and it, there's just so much power in it. So here are a couple of examples. I'm going to post them here of you moving a dart. Typically we start with a dart under the bust, but you can move it anywhere along the perimeter of the pattern. You can also split your dart into multiple darts like this example here. You can move that dart around. You can even see here where they intersect at the center, um, making a cool design. And the cool thing about the move a dart principle is that not only does it apply to any pattern, any dart that you could come across in your journey, but by moving that dart around, it does not necessarily, it can, but it does not change the fit of the silhouette. So if you're starting with a sloper that fits you already or a pattern that fits you already, and you just decide that you don't want that dart there, or you wanna split it into multiple darts, or you want to split it into two darts, and move it into a different position to get a slightly different look, it's not going to change the fit. You don't have to refit your garment again. It's already going to fit because that's the rule. That's the principle of the move a dart. So there's more to it than I can get into in this Tricky Thursday, but that's the first principle. The second principle, this is where it gets really fun, is the added fullness. So when you're learning move a dart, you're learning, yeah, okay, great. I can move this dart around. I can split it up. I can change it into different seam lines, but that all keeps the same basic silhouette, right? Of your basic pattern that you're starting with, or your sloper that you're starting with. What if you want gathers? What if you want a full flared skirt? What if you want to start adding a little jazz? That's where the added fullness principle comes in. So here I'm showing you some examples of there's some added fullness at the sides here, or you can add, you can use the added fullness principle to make a skirt like this, a full skirt from a basic pencil skirt sloper. And that's just the beginning. There are a lot of other fun stuff that you can do with added fullness. Now, so now you know how to move darts around so you can get different seams. You can add fullness and add extra fullness so that you can get gathers and get cool designs with that. And then finally, the last principle, which in my opinion is probably the most powerful one, the one that you use the most, with the other two principles, with the move a dart, we're staying with the same silhouette. With the added fullness, we're adding more. So we're, we are changing the silhouette slightly, but if you want to stay with a more fitted garment and you wanna cut down your neckline or you wanna cut down your armhole, um, that's where you're gonna to wanna to use principle number three, which is contouring. Now contouring is really, really fun because that's where you start to really hug into the body. And what's cool about this principle is it's basically move a dart, but we're giving you measurements and we're showing you that you can create these like V-neck designs or bikini top or doing an umpire like midriff waist like you're seeing here. Um, so all of those are utilizing the contour method and that is the third principle. So with these three principles, you can really design anything. And the more crazy that you get with your designs, it really, you can have a lot of fun. You can do all these crazy things, but it all starts with these three simple rules. That's it, just three simple rules. And once you've learned that foundation, and that's why I always start with that in my classes, um, the world's your oyster. You can make just about anything you can think of. Nope, 
I'm not even gonna say just about, you can make anything that you can imagine. And that's why I love <laughs> teaching this way because it's just like the ideas start coming. I'm gonna show you a couple of things and show you how to do stuff. And then you're like, oh, that's how I do that. And you could start applying it to ideas that you have in your head. So it's really a lot of fun. Again, if you wanna learn more about this, you can check out my classes up in my bio. Um, but I just thought I would do a little tricky Thursday about it because I often get asked, what are these three principles? Why do I need to learn them? I'm here to tell you it's so we can jump in and start having fun making your designs right away, right away. Let's do it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.